because sometimes life is a hurricane. That's my money right there, just gone. That is my plan. I don't know where to begin. Could be the curves on your body, but then could be your hair, maybe your skin. Yeah, uh -huh. baby girl, I'm trying to get with you. Come, let me see what we get into. Yeah. We get. It don't even gotta be physical. Man. As long as that pretty face visible. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ri. Hi, on the channel we talk about a lot of things, mainly travel life and beauty. So if you're interested in those things, my friend, my friend, my friend. Make sure you hit that subscribe. It is very, very, very important. Think like top to doers of the day. Hit that subscribe. Thank you so, 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 so much. All right. So in today's video, we are hopping into my 2023 financial goals. Y'all know we don't shy away from money talks on the channel. I have been talking about everything from my paycheck routine to how I've been able to like, you know, start this whole homeowner process, everything we've shared on the channel. And it's the end of the year. As I'm filming this, December is creeping. Apparently in a few days, Santa will come down the chimney and apparently it's Christmas. Jesus will reach back to him. Picture it. It's the wildest thing ever. But this is the world we live in and everything is moving really fast. So to prepare for a new 2023, a new year, we're going to set some realistic, attainable, but still like, you know, challenging financial goals. So this video will have two parts. I showed you four, but I meant two. So ignore this hand. Two, two parts. <laughs> the first part will be our 2023 financial goals and the second part will be a 2023 budget with me. I know. Y'all know we big on budgeting on this side. I do have a personal budget. If you're interested, it's a do better budget. That is always linked in every description box of every video. But that is the template that I use and that I share with you guys where you guys can download a copy for yourself and get some financial awareness going on. In 2023, we're going to be aware. Let's clear that up. We're finally gonna know what our money is doing, and that is very important. So, in this video, let's hop into our 2023 financial goals. I wrote it down in my handy dandy passion planner. I have a discount code as well. Y'all know I like to write things down, put things to pen to paper, and actually sit down and plan out what I want my year to look like, and more importantly, what I want my money to do in this new year. Before we hop into anything, we are gonna have a drink. Our drink of today is non-alcoholic. Oh, y'all you see, I got a wine. I know, I'm switching it up, changing modes. Follow me. But today's drink is non-alcoholic and is sponsored by none other than Vitamol Plus. <laughs> it is not sponsored by Vitamol, but if you know, you know. Vitamol is like a huge thing, I feel like, in the Caribbean. I've only seen it in the Caribbean, to be honest, but Vitamol is like, I would say like a malt drink. But this one is Vitamol Plus. So it has acai, guara, acai, guarana, and aloe vera in it. I'm going to drink it out of my celebratory Christmas tumbler so I feel festive. Because why not? Let's bring the vibes. Oh, boy. Getting to it. Yeah. Bop, bop, bop. Drinking hand. Cheers. Boop. First sip. Delicioso. Yes, I love Vitamo. Who doesn't love a good Vitamo? And I have been so tired lately that this is honestly all that I need. But we're going to sit down and hop into our 2023 financial goals. I did not set a lot because I feel as though, in my personal opinion, sometimes we want money to do a lot. And by that, I mean we want to save, we want to invest, we want to pay off debt, we want to do all these things at once. But what I'm noticing right now in this financial journey that I'm in is that it is okay not to do all of that at once. It is okay just to save for a while. It is okay just to be down debt for a while. It's okay to start investing like piece by piece, but like do that at a time where you know you're not necessarily hurting. I feel like it's good to take your money in stages is what I'm trying to say. That is okay. And I'm learning that that works a lot better for me and I'm able to accomplish my goals faster when I just zone in, become super linear, and become super focused and just accomplish my money goals one step at a time. Child, you do what you want to do, but I can't be stressing myself out I'm trying to do seven things with my money. It's easier if I just do one thing at a time. Now, that being said, my first big financial goal 
is to pay for the appliances and structural upgrades of this home. If you are new here, definitely watch the property updates, but I'm currently in the process of building. Come on now. What the hell is that? Help us. Okay, I'm gonna continue. So I decided to have my construction costs just be the basic standard um, fixtures, furnishes, all the stuff, windows, all those things. And now that I'm actually getting into the building process, I know for sure that I want to do some structural upgrades. For example, I'm a YouTuber, so I need big windows to be able to film. I like to film with natural light. So more windows with bigger windows with more natural light will be a lot better for me in the new home. I want to do some things in that home that are going to require more money because it's a little bit more than the basic. That being said, I want to pay for those things out of pocket and not have to take out any more debt to pay for those things and to have that money ready and saved and able to be spent i also want to play for the appliances my appliance plan is to pay for all of the appliances in the kitchen first and then save up next for the washer and the dryer so i'm okay with not having a washer and dryer when i first move in but if so i'm trying my hardest to have a fridge stove and microwave at the time that i move in so i think a good ballpark figure for this would be ten thousand dollars so that's currently what i'm trying to work towards and i want to have that money ready and available so that i don't have to take out any additional debt and i do not want to put my appliances and stuff on a credit card so i'm trying my best to be better about it all right the next big financial goal I have is wait a minute you should definitely watch the 2023 reset because we're talking about a lot of our 2023 goals and stuff so I will link it here and down below definitely watch that video because it'll give you more context into what's going on up here in the old noggin because I feel like if you watch this video right off the bat you might be overwhelmed and I get it because sometimes life is a hurricane so definitely go back and watch that video okay let's continue my second big financial goal in 2023 we need to buy this new macbook pro and we also need to buy final cut so that i can get a little boost i can call myself an imovie pro at this point i've been editing on imovie for almost three years i have a down pack now final cut is that upgrade picture it okay so imovie is let's say a honda civic she's cute She's cute, she's reliable, she's sporty. Now I feel like Final Cut Pro would be like a Tesla. The Tesla G would be like a Final Cut Pro. So I'm trying to elevate my ed my editing skills to a Tesla G. But I also need to get a MacBook Pro because my MacBook Air doesn't have enough storage for me to do half of the videos that I want to do. So that is a huge goal of mine and I am planning on saving. Okay, so a MacBook alone is 2000 especially if you want enough storage since you're editing on it, it's gonna be closer to 2000 and then Final Cut Pro is 300 So I'm estimating about 2500 for this one because it's a lot. Yeah, because one thing about Steve Jobs, he had a price. He said, if you want it, do what it do, run me my check. And I have to give the man his money. So that's gonna be one of my next big financial goals that I'm working towards. The next goal I have is kind of interrelated with that last goal, which is to make $5,000 in my side business or my side passion or my side hustle, whatever you want to call it. I really want to make $5,000. I do have videos sharing how much I make. I think I did one for 2021 and I'll definitely do one for 2022, but I also shared how much YouTube has paid me so far so I can link that video as well. But I really want to make like $5,000 in my side business so that I can use that money Money or half of that money to pay for the MacBook Pro. I'm trying to do this thing where I don't, I no longer use my nine to five to fund my side passion. Like I feel like gradually as you progress and as things evolve, you really want to be able to say I use the business's money to do like these business expenses. So that is my plan. My last big financial goal would be I really want to put down in 2023 really want to put down ten thousand dollars towards my car loan because i have a car as you guys know i bought it it's the jeep so i have this thing in my brain where everything is a car but like i don't say like jeep suv truck i don't say these things everything to me mentally is a car i think it might be a behemoth thing and if so i apologize but i have a suv 
and I took it out on a car loan and I really want to work towards paying off the car loan because I feel like I can pay off this car loan in three years and I need to start to make those payments on the principal so that I can meet that goal. This year I gave myself a pass and I spent a full year with no principal payments just because I was focused so much on the house but once I move into the house my plan is to like buckle down maybe buy a couch if I want to be comfortable and actually start paying off my car loan with my money so not a big savings year in 2023 we're gonna pay off some debt and we're gonna buy a lot of things out of pocket that we need without incurring any additional debt you feels me you get the vibes I love it all right y'all so that's me that's my truth if you want this is a safe space you can drop a financial goal that you have down below we can keep each other on track we can keep each other accountable so our next thing is to do our budgeting you guys know i used to do better budget and it has already been tweaked for 2023 we made some changes so if you really push it to do better budget this is your sign download the 2023 version it includes a fun little change where we break up our expenses get it together my stomach is active is my stomach trying to do a ting um while i film it it's inappropriate i do apologize get your 2023 do better budget it includes a nice breakup of the variable expenses and fixed expenses and i'll walk you guys through that now full transparency i'm doing the expense part of my budget with me i'm choosing not to do the income part of it because you know it's the internet so i'm only going to be doing the expense part of this budgeting portion just because that is my personal preference and i prefer no judgment so we're gonna hop into our do better budget yay Apologies if the light is changing, the sun is going down, but I'm still here, we're still flowing. So we're gonna sit down, think about our expenses going into 2023 and create a good budget for each of my expenses. So like I said, we made a little tweak in our 2023 budget. We're separating our fixed expenses from our variable expenses. So for example, my rent, that doesn't change. So that will qualify as a fixed expense. So I have that in that category. But then like for example variable expenses for me groceries gas medical expenses i have a category called rum and fun that's my eye of the time of my life and then my gym membership beauty and grooming where i get my nails my facials all of that um phone expense btc i guess that is fixed so maybe we'll move my phone expense to fix this year and then i'll put btc that's my phone provider here okay so for this expense I normally pay $40 a month for my plan so I'm gonna drag that across Bang. all right that's done and then my variable expenses so let's go through those real quick so I categorize my car into two expenses other and gas so last year what i like to do also pro tip if you are not sure how much money you're spending go back to your bank account or your receipts and stuff and just like start to track how much you spent a month on gas or groceries or stuff like that i always look at my previous year's actual numbers so my 2022 actual numbers i look at that i just looked at that and i'm going to use the average of how much I spent each month so I took a look and I actually spent on average about a hundred dollars on gas each month which is very good for me so I'm gonna put that in my budget and say every month a hundred dollars out of my salary is very likely to go towards my gas and then other car expenses so that for me would be my service my car wash all kind of stuff my next service is in April which is the fourth column so I'm going to estimate an extra $200 to that plus I'm trying to estimate at least $30 a month on just like random stuff which is no I lie probably, probably 50 because I like to go to the car wash sometimes and get my car clean and that can run me anywhere from 30 to $40 so I just like to be prepared so every other month will be 50 except for the 250 in the months where my car is getting service so that would be November and everything else would be 50 
y'all get me and that's the point of this you gotta sit down and be realistic and be like what am i actually gonna be spending in what months groceries so let me take a quick look on average my grocery bills were like my grocery bills is so sad but on average so i can go down here and just click what the average is i spent 125 dollars on average on my grocery bill so that's horrible <laughs> I know that's like piss poor i'm really trying to spend at least 200 dollars on groceries because i'm supposed to be like cooking more and this needs to happen so i'm trying to spend 200 dollars on groceries which means that my eating out budget which i think these two should be closer so i'm gonna move this here my eating out and then delete this delete row my eating out, I'm trying to keep it to 200 a month, which is not realistic. It's just not, but that's what I would like it to be. I know the average on my eating out is going to be wild. Yeah, so on average, I eat out about $300 a month. I'm just like eating out, grabbing lunch, grabbing dinner, all of these things. They add freaking up. Sorry, I get mad and emotional. Like, Y'all don't need to see that side of me. But okay, so let's be realistic. $250 on eating out. That's my money right there. Just gone. Okay, and then next we have medical expenses. So for me, this is doctor visits, um, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to estimate about $100 each month towards that. This could be my prescriptions, all of that good stuff. We're going to estimate $100 on that. My gym membership. I am not happy with how much I pay for the gym, but that's okay. <laughs> so I think my next membership will be March. I plan on continuing it be in the gym because I gotta get this weight down. So the only way to do that is to actually be in the gym. Rum and fun. I actually trying to drink less. So how about we just set rum and fun to a hundred dollars? Because for me, rum and fun is like maybe buying wine. Or maybe doing something like grabbing a beer or something like that like that's from and fun so let's budget that down to like a hundred dollars beauty and grooming my nails cost 60 on average so 60 and then sometimes facials depending on when I get them my facial could run me until $150 so that's about two that's budget $200 on grooming this is crazy already coffee i am not trying to buy any coffee so um how much would it be a cup of coffee is six dollars i want to spend at least twenty dollars on coffee seriously i'm not trying to spend a bunch of money on coffee shopping i'm trying to spend nothing so fifty dollars on shopping gifts so i have a category for gifts which are like friends birthdays and stuff like that like my mom's birthday is in january my brother's birthday is in february and then kino's birthday is in february and then my daddy's birthday is in april i just have a lot of birthdays so i like to budget out like 50 dollars each month just towards gifts life is pricey like if this doesn't show you how pricey your life is nothing will so pepper she goes to the vet good lord and then she has her next guard and a heart guard her medications on top of that papa has a grooming so me and keno take turns paying for the grooming but that's like about 50 dollars a month if she goes sometimes she doesn't go so it all depends but papa i'm going to budget her out did my light just go anyway papa i'm going to budget papa out to 50 dollars a month and that should work I don't know when her next vet appointment is, so I don't want to put that in prematurely. But when I do confirm when our vet appointment is, I can put that into the budget. Travel and miscellaneous is zero. Because I don't know. Okay, I lied. I need to set like $100 aside because I know I have to take a trip for these appliances. I probably want to go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Brand Smart, all of those stuff to look for appliances. But that won't be, that will be probably around May. So maybe for me, if I set aside, okay, so if I set aside $100 each month, I should have the flight money to travel in May. That's a good plan. Zeta Phi Beta, my sorority, so dues are in October. So 
I can't remember what dues is. So I'll just put a hundred dollars there just to remind myself to pay for it. And then transfer to the US is if I convert anything into US dollars or US cash from traveling, which I don't intend to, so I can delete that from my budget. Business expense, if I have anything related to shipping costs or stuff like that, I like to budget out. So that'll be another fifty dollars. Which is wild. Okay, and then buying charges. I'll just delete this from my budget because it's honestly not that much. And for the home, I use this line for anything that I can't plan that I might need for the home, like maybe an appraisal report, survey review, stuff like that that you don't expect. I can't necessarily budget it out because I don't know what is needed. So I'm going to delete this from my budget. And I like that because it, it just allows me to see things a bit clearer and a bit better. Okay, y'all, so this is my budget for 2022 in terms of variable expenses. Boy, that was a journey, but I think this is very realistic as to where my money is going. And then just some quick tips, like when you're budgeting and stuff, like try to make it enjoyable for yourself. Pour yourself a drink if you need to just to power through it and remember you're not doing this for anybody else but yourself you are trying to create financial awareness with your money and you are trying to have a better relationship with your money so it starts with you so yeah just take it day by day step by step remove the pressure and don't feel like awful about it and what i like to think about is that this is me at least preparing for a better financial future this is me taking the first step and sometimes the first step isn't always pretty and it's sometimes the what the hell is that oh that's my curl sorry why do i have a random curl just doing that anyway Anyway, y'all, but yeah, sometimes the first step is honestly one of the hardest steps. You just have to sit down and make the dedication to yourself, your family, your um, future to actually know where your money is going and have a plan for it heading into each one. And one big final tip is that literally sitting down and doing your budgeting takes no more than 15 minutes. Your wallet is worth 15 minutes out of your week. So don't think of it as a tedious, long, annoying task. Just knock it out in the 15 minutes and see what you can learn. I don't approach budgeting like, uh, oh, I'm going to beat myself up for having this money. I'm trying to approach it with grace and I'm trying to approach it with, you know, gratitude that I even have this money that I can allocate to these different sections. So let it come from a place of humility and I would say like graciousness and gratitude if that works um, as opposed to like me being mad that I have all these bills and stuff because it is super easy to sit there and get annoyed that you have all of these expenses you can imagine like doing a budget with a child and being like okay clothes shoes extracurriculars all that stuff like it gets super hectic so definitely shout out to our parents for like raising us to this point because who don't know how it's done and then also shout out to you if you are a parent or a dog mom or wherever you are and you're just like having to have other people depend on you and your money to survive that is not easy and that is huge so shout out to you Whew. all right y'all so that is it when it comes to this video i feel like we talked a lot about money and a lot about big plans and progress and all those good stuff which has me super excited for whatever the new year holds like i have chills <laughs> all right but i'm gonna end this vlog here thank you guys so so much for watching be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy money talks definitely let me know leave a comment down below i would love love to know your thoughts and thank you guys so much for watching as always i appreciate you i value you bad i can see you on the next one bye